This is an example on how to compute a confidence interval for a population mean when sigma is known. In this example, a study of the ages of motorcyclists killed in crashes involves the random selection of 150 drivers with a mean of 37.1 years based on data from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Assuming a population standard deviation of 12 years, construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the mean age of all motorcyclists killed in crashes. The first step to do is to identify the sample size. That would be n of 150. We also in the question have to identify the mean, and that the mean of the 150 individuals is 37.1 years. So that would be labeled as x bar, or the sample mean, of 37.1 years. If we read along, we're assuming that the population standard deviation, also known as sigma, is 12. And we want to construct a 99% confidence interval estimate for the mean mu, that would be the mean of all motorcyclists, killed in car crashes. So we want to find the 99% confidence interval for mu. And that's given by uh, x bar, our sample mean, plus and minus, since we know sigma, we are going to use our z standard critical values. And with a subscript of alpha over 2, that tells us how much information is in each of the tail. And we're going to multiply by sigma over the square root of n. Now we have x bar, we have sigma, and we have n based off of the data that we're given. But what we have to find is this critical value. And z alpha over 2 critical value is a two-tailed test because we have a lower and an upper boundary always for a confidence interval. On the lower side, the two tails represents an information of alpha, which is over 2, because it's split symmetric in this distribution. Since we're constructing a 99% confidence interval, 99% or 0.99 would be the information or the total number of data probability falling into these, between these lower and this upper boundary. In order to calculate alpha, we always take 1 or 100% of the distribution minus the total area, and we'll get alpha is equal to 0.01. Splitting it equally into each of the two sides, alpha over 2, we'll get 0 0.005. And since it's asymmetric distribution, we'll have a same area under the other tail. That's a probability. So the probability of being less than some lower boundary, which we'll find what that is, is 0 0.005. And the probability of being greater than some upper boundary is 0 0.005. What we can do is find the critical region. And a critical region is those z, alpha, z with a subscript alpha over 2 critical values. In order to find those, we have to use our z tables. If we use the negative tables, it will tell us the left tail side. Or if we use the positive table, we can find, we'd have to find the area, depending on which table that we're using, the appropriate number. Now we're looking at 0 .005 in the body of the table because that is all of this area to the left. The z-score, what we're going to look up, is we're going to read that. So based off of the negative z-scores, if I look in the body of the table for something close to or exactly 0 0.005, what you'll find is there's an asterisk between 0 .0049 and 0 .0051. And if you read the asterisk all the way down, what you'll see is a value for area of 0 .005, you'll find the z-score of negative 2.575. So we have our z value of negative 2.575 and positive because it's a symmetric distribution. That's where the plus and minus comes into in our formula. So the plus and minus is already accounted for in our negative and our positive critical values. So our critical value is plus or minus 2.575. So now that we have our z alpha over 2 of 2.575, we'll add and subtract 
this together. So we know x bar is 37.1. We have this plus or minus. The z alpha over 2 is 2.575. Sigma is 12. And n is 150. Simplifying all that down, we have to take 2.575 and multiply it by 12 and divide it by square root of 150. And we'll get, that's called the margin of error. So all of this part here, the second half after the plus and minus, is called the margin of error. So what we can do if we find the margin of error, we can just add and subtract the mean from it. So we take 37.1, we take 2.575 times 12 over the square root of 150, we'll come out with 2.52297435. Carry all decimal places until the very end of the calculation and then we can round. Otherwise we're introducing rounding errors. So when we take 37.1 minus this margin of error, we're going to get what the actual value is in years for the lower bound in this tail. So we have 37.1 minus that 2.522-9744 and we'll get 34.58 that's the lower limit or the lower boundary is 34.58 just taking 37.1 minus 2.522974435 and we can get the upper limit by adding taking 37.1 plus that 2.522974435 2 when we do that what we'll get thirty-seven point one plus two point five two two nine seven four four three five and we get thirty nine point six two. That's the upper limit. Now we write the interval so the 99% confidence interval is written as an interval of the lower limit, 34.58, less than mu, because mu is bounded, our population mean is bounded by a lower and an upper boundary because we don't know what our population mean is. We can only infer that it's between 34.58 years and 39.62 years. So this final answer is the confidence interval that we're bounding our population mean by.